Don't worry, I didn't forget. Elias Diaz, he is now a San Diego Padre. The Padres, they are signing him to a minor league deal. I did my reaction to the Padre Cardinal game earlier tonight. Went and finished watch the Mercury Liberty ending there in the WNBA, then coming back here doing this. This was actually reported, or at least that's when I saw it, was during the Padres game tonight. And I was a little surprised by it because Elias Diaz was released mid-August. And so I saw that news and then I kind of forgot about him. But when you think about it, it does make sense because Elias Diaz, he is a better defensive player. If you go look at baseball savant with some of those, those numbers there, he's a better option than Luis Camposano is. The Padres, I feel like they have their everyday postseason catcher, and that's Kyle Gashioka. As of now, he has earned that. He's hitting better. He's actually provided some power, especially at home for the Padres, and he's been better defensively than Luis Camposano. Uh, I'm looking at the baseball savant right now, and Diaz, he's in the red in three of the four categories. There's blocks above average. He's not in the red there. There's uh, caught stealing above average. He's in the 76th percentile there. Framing, he's in the 77th percentile. Pop time, he's in the 85th percentile. And for Campy, he is in the 8th percentile, which is way worse than blocks above average for Diaz, which was 45th percentile. He's in the 8th percentile for caught stealing above average, which is way in the blue. And then it's also way in the blue for framing, which is in the 5th uh, percentile. His pop time is way worse than Elias Diaz in the percentiles compared to, I believe, league average. I think that's what that is. So if you're going to want a, a better catching option and in the postseason, Sure, you want your offense. Like that's great to have a, a offense catcher, someone that can give that to you. But I'd rather have someone like Kyle Higashioka, someone like Elias Diaz, even if they don't give you the offense, I'd rather have the solid defense there, the better guy there, literally behind the plate, than at the plate come postseason time. I will rely on my other guys. I will rely on Fernando and Xander and Merrill and Profar and Crony and Manny and all this talent that the Padres have in other spots. I'll rely on that over the catcher. I want the catcher to be focused on the pitching staff, getting the most out of the pitchers, how to attack hitters. I want that in the postseason. I want a reliable backstop. And right now, Campy just isn't that for me over Higgy. And Defensively, it doesn't seem like Campy is that over Elias Diaz. Now, there's a reason why Elias Diaz was released by the Colorado Rockies. And I mean, this is like the Jerks and Profar situation all over again. Profar was not having a good year last year. Padres pick him up. He was a part of that run that they went on at the end of the year here. Yeah, I mean, the Rockies, they're not going anywhere. Give some playing time to some other guys. And Diaz, if you look at his baseball savant page for his offense, most of it is in the blue. Barrel percentage, hard hit percentage, sweet spot, squared up, chase rate. Uh, he doesn't walk. Batting run value, base running value, like everything other than like his fielding. His fielding run value, by the way, 83rd percentile, so that's in the red. Pretty much everything else, I mean, the bat speed, I guess, is, is good, but everything else, it's a struggle. And his last 20 or so games, I think his last 22 games, that he was with the Rockies, he had a 431 OPS. He was hitting 169, but it's in there. You know, he still had what 18 home runs recently in a Rocky uniform. And I know Denver is different than San Diego, um, but yeah, he had he had 14 homers, 14 homers last year. I had 18 homers in 2021. So I mean, even last year, uh, I saw someone in you on the YouTube comments recently earlier tonight ask about it could this be another Gary Sanchez for the Padres and I could see that a little bit but Gary last year he kind of took over and he was really good offensively I I don't see Elias Diaz going that far like how Gary did offensively like that and I don't know if he's going to get the playing time to do that you know last year playing time was wide open where this year I think the Padres are pretty darn confident in Higgy and Diaz, I don't think he's coming up immediately to the big league level. Um, but, I mean, when you're trying to win, I think Campy has an option left. You're trying to win. 
you got to have your two best catchers. And it's not like you have a lefty and a righty. All of your guys are righties, Higgy, Campy, and Elias Diaz here. So, and you're not going to pick Brett Sullivan, right? I think he's still with El Paso. So for me, I, you can't, this is one of those, it was like signing David Peralta at that minor league deal or Donovan Solano, right? And look how those have worked out. I can't hate the move. I cannot hate A.J. Preller signing a guy who has done it at the big league level before and he's good defensively. Like there, there's, there's things there to, to dream on. A minor league deal, it costs you almost nothing because the season's almost over and it's a prorated league minimum. The Rockies are already paying the rest of his guaranteed salary. It's not like you have to pick up the $6 million, I think, left on that deal. He's a free agent at the end of the year. If it doesn't work out, who cares, really? Like, all right. Padres, in my opinion, as long as Higgy stays healthy, they have a solid everyday catcher in the postseason. Uh, if it works out, then that's even better, you know? So that's what I've got on that. Uh, Elias Diaz, like, he's... Just watching him against the Padres, yeah, I've noticed him defensively. And offensively, there's been some moments. I think a lot of people, and I, I brought it up today as well, the winning the All-Star Game MVP in Seattle last year. So, like, he can do it. It's there. He, he There are moments there. And so we'll see. We'll see what he does. We'll see when he gets brought up. I, I'd probably be surprised. Uh, yeah, I, I actually would be surprised. Be surprised if he does not see any time in September with the Padres at the big league level. Uh, I don't know if it would be Campy being sent down or would it be going with three catchers on the roster? But if you do that, then you're going to have to have someone else on the bench go down. And who would that be? I don't think they're going to send Tyler Wade down. Mason McCoy's just in Hassan Kim's spot. So when Kim comes back, McCoy's going to go down anyway. They're not going to send David Peralta down. Would they send Bryce Johnson down? But when Tatis comes back, maybe you'd have Elias Diaz come up, you send Bryce Johnson, but then you're running with like three outfielders only. You know, Johnson's your fourth outfielder. So it would have to be, can't be going down, right? I feel like. Um, so, hey, I mean, they just sent Waldron down recently, so they can do it. You're trying to win. I think that you, you got to see. We've seen what Campy is going to do this year. I think you got to see what Elias Diaz can give you here in September, coming up in September here as we're at the end of August, see what he can give to see if he can be the, the second catcher on that roster come postseason time.